Hey guys, I am back here again in our classroom doing some cleaning and I wanted to stop real quick and get this video made for you before I um, before I continued doing what I was doing. Um, so yesterday the video I made for you, it didn't sound very good. Um, hopefully you were able to hear part of it. <clears throat> um, so we learned yesterday um, in Pink and Say that um, these two boys were very young and they were um, part of the Civil War, uh, the war between the states where they were fighting over the issue of slavery and or that's part of it anyway. And so um, uh, Pink, his name was Pincus um, and they called him Pink. Pink um, rescued Say, his name was, I forget, was it Sheldon? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, he rescued him from from uh, a uh, he had a wound, so he took him back to his house. And his mother, her name was Momo Bay. She uh, was there at their home, and uh, their home was at a plantation. She was the only one there. Everyone else had left. So we're gonna uh, pick up where we left off, and I will read um, this last part here. Um, or actually, I'll just kind of talk a little bit about it. Um, Pink was saying that the master, who would have been his boss, uh, Mr. Ailey, I think his name was, he taught Pink how to read. And Pink said he didn't think it was because he was being kind. He just wanted Pink to read to him. So, but anyway, um, we'll continue. we'll continue reading here. All right, that night after we ate, so let me turn this way a little bit. That night after we ate, Momo Bay came back to the table with a worn old Bible. She was so happy. My heart ached at the thought of telling her that we'd be leaving soon. Master Ailey showed him how paper talks. Show him, Pink, she said. He took out a pair of spectacles from his pocket. He opened the Bible to the Psalms of David and started to read. His voice was steady and had such wonder. Just learning them words made pictures come into my mind. I surely do wish I could read, I announced to them without thinking. When Pink saw I was ashamed, he took my hand. I'll teach you, say, someday, I'll teach you. I could feel my face flushing up. Then I spoke up. I done something important, I announced. Of course you have, child. Of course you have, his mother said. I touched Mr. Lincoln's hand. It were near Washington. He were quartered there just before Bull Run. The president himself were shaking everybody's hands. And I just put my hand right out. And he took it? Pink asked. Yep, he took it, I answered. Now there's a sign, ain't it? He said, smiling broadly. Touch my hand, Pink. Now you can say you touched the hand that shook the hand of Abraham Lincoln. Next best thing to touching him, Momo Bay said in wonder. <clears throat> Most of the next day, Pink was studying an old map. Marauders don't fan out further than 30 miles or so from their camp. If they come here, then their units must be that close. We gotta get south of the river. See here, say? That's where my troops were headed. We can meet up or, uh, with them about here, I figure. Me, me, meet up with who? You ain't leaving. His mother's voice caught as she came upon us. Now, mother, you knew we couldn't stay here. You had to know that, he said as he tried to calm her. No, no, my babies, my dear babies, she cried. She was inconsolable for a time. Then she sat still and feared as she just listened. Mother, this war has to be won or this sickness that has taken this land will never stop. Pink always called slavery the sickness when he talked. We have to go. He knelt at her feet. By the looking that came in her eye, she'd known that this day was coming. I could feel my breathing catch. My chest was heavy, my hands were sweating, and I felt sick at my stomach. I knew that I had to tell Pink something. I, I just didn't know how. <clears throat> yeah. 
That night, I couldn't sleep. What's wrong, child? Momo Bay said from her chair. I don't want to go back, I blurted. I know, child. Of course you don't. You don't understand. I, I took up and I ran away from my unit. I was hit when I was running. I sobbed so hard my ribs hurt. I'm a coward and a deserter. She looked at the fire and she'd said nothing for a long time. Then her voice covered my crying. You ain't nothing of the kind. You a child, a child, of course you scared. Ain't nobody that ain't. I'm not brave like Pink. I'm not brave. Child, being brave don't mean you ain't afeard. Don't you know that? I don't want to die. Face things worse than death, child. But you got nothing to fear. You're here now and I'm hugging you up. You gonna be an old man someday. When it's your time, the sweet Lord will send a hummingbird to fly your soul to heaven. Now ain't you a, you ain't afeard of hummingbirds, are you? Her words brought me sweet sleep. That night, I dreamt of hummingbirds and green pastures full of sunlight and wildflowers. The next morning, we mustered to leave. We packed cornbread, salt pork, and dried beans. I could have done just about anything to stay, but my place was to go with Pink. I owed him that. Just as we were making the last sweep of the place, making sure that there were no signs of us being there, we heard wild screams and shrieks coming from the woods. Marauders! Pink said as he grabbed a piece of wood for a club. Momo Bay took it from him. Get to the root cellar. They ain't got no truck with truck with an old dark woman. You get in that cellar, you hear? We didn't like it, but then he pushed us. We didn't like it, but then she pushed us. Hurry, afore they hear. She lifted the root cellar door and showed us in. Don't come out till I tell you. We heard the porch steps creak as she ran. From the cabin. She's drawing them off, Pink whispered. When the marauders came in, my heart was pounding so hard. I was sure they could hear him up there above us. There was terrible commotion as they ransacked, looking for food. Then there was a silence. A single shot echoed through the trees outside. They let out a war whoop! as they thundered off. We waited for a sign from Momo Bay, but it didn't come. Finally, we climbed out and we ran outside only to see Momo Bay lying just beyond the porch. We put you in their way by staying here, Pink cried as he rocked her in his arms. Her eyes were looking in a faraway place and she closed them. Your son loves you, Momo Bay. Your son loves you, he sobbed as he kissed her. We both held her hand until there was no more warmth in it. After we buried her under the willow tree, we set out. Pink figured we were a three days walk from the Union troops. He watched the movement of the sun. Her words still rang in my heart. Her words about being brave. My steps were as sure now as they had ever been since the war started. We walked in the open as clear as a country stroll until the morning of the second day. Then we knew we were being followed. Take these, Pink said as he took his spectacles from his pocket. They catch me with them. There'll be trouble for sure. When they caught up to us, one yelled at me, Where are you going with that darky, boy? I was afraid to answer because of my northern accent. It would dead sure give us away. Boy, what outfit you part of? Their leader barked. I couldn't answer. You union boy? One jeered as he pulled my uniform from my knapsack. No, I ain't no Yankee. I got that from, from one from a dead one, I sputtered, trying to convince them. That was when we were grabbed. My words had given us away. 
We were prisoners of the Confederate Army. We were held up in a barn that night. Pink shivered with fever. I held him as he had done for me. The next morning, we were thrown into a boxcar. We rode for what seemed two days, stopping many times. When the door slid open, the daylight was blinded. We were loaded into a buckboard and taken the, through town. The townsfolk looked hard at us. All they had left for us was mean looks and a heap of hate. We jarred to a stop in front of the gates that marked the entrance to a stockade. Says Anderson, Bill, Pink whispered. My heart stopped. I'd heard of this place. It was one of the worst of the Confederate camps. The Confederate army would be those who were for slavery. When we were pulled from the buckboard, we fell hard to the ground. No, no, I begged as they pulled us both along. Because of his fever, Pink stumbled and fell. They dragged him along with such meanness. He did not protest, so they forced us in different directions. Then he reached for me and said, Let me touch the hand that touched Mr. Lincoln. Say, just one last time. I watched his eyes fill with tears and cleave my hand to his until they wrenched us apart. They smote him. They dragged him away from me. He looked back at me and tried to say something more, but they crossed his back with a knotted hemp, and they pushed him along. Sheldon Russell Curtis was released from Andersonville Prison some months later, weighing no more than 78 pounds. Andersonville was built to hold only 10,000 prisoners, but by the end of the war, it held 33,000 soldiers. There was no fresh water, no shelter, no food. 13,000 men and boys died of starvation and dysentery. Sheldon Curtis returned to his home and recovered. He settled in Berlin Township in Saranac, Michigan. He married Abigail Barnard and fathered seven children. He became a grandfather and a great-grandfather during his long lifetime. He died a very old man in 1924. Pincus Ailey never returned home. For him, there was to be no wife, no children, no grandchildren to remember him. It was told that he was hanged within hours after he was taken into Andersonville and his body was thrown into a lime pit. I know the story to be true because Sheldon Russell Curtis told his daughter, Rosa. Rosa Curtis Stowell told it to her daughter, Estella. Estella Stowell Farber, in turn, told it to her son, William. He then told me, his daughter, Patricia. When my father finished this story, he put out his hand and said, This is the hand that has touched the hand that has touched the hand that shook the hand of Abraham Lincoln. So, Patricia Polacco was related to Sheldon Russell Curtis, or Say. She wrote the story of her, let's see, it would be her great, great grandfather, I think. Let's see. Her dad was William. Then her grand, uh, let's see, then her grandmother would have been Estella Stowell Barber. And then her great, great grandmother would have been Rosa Curtis Stowell. Um, so then I guess Sheldon would have been her great, great, great grandfather. Anyway, I'm not sure if I got that right or not, but great story. Sad story. Didn't end nicely, did it? Not at all. 
So anyway, <clears throat> tomorrow I will come with, uh, actually next week, I will come to you with another story. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one I'm going to read yet, but it might end up being a Patricia Polacco book because you know how much I like her. So, all right, hope you guys are having a great day. See ya.